If you live in the U.S. and care about whether the dollars in your pocket will be able to buy bread in the future, you've likely been paying attention to debates like this in Washington, D.C. What Congress has done and what the Fed has done, we've literally injected uh, uh, about $5.3 trillion, and I don't think we got very much for it. The dollar during these last three years was devalued almost 50 percent. Our growing debt could cost us jobs and do serious damage to the economy. If you're this state legislator in office just 30 miles from the nation's capital, watching closely. All these, are, ish, all these are issued in February and March of 1933 during the banking crisis. Growing more concerned about the direction of policy and the dollar. This is how they were going to conduct currency. If the Federal Reserve collapses, are we going to go back to this? You're making a contingency plan. How do we conduct business? How do we conduct an economy if, in fact, all the, the, this kingdom of paper collapses because people don't have any, any more trust in it. And if you go shopping at this farmer's market in the shadow of Capitol Hill, you want to get some cash to spend at the market? You're already cashing in on another form of tender. The currency used in the market here is called the Potomac. It's a good interchangeable currency instead of the dollar. A local currency circulating within this community of merchants. They have fives, ones, and tens. It was minted to help keep more money closer to home for these reasons. Economic instability, um, community building. We first interviewed its creator close to two years ago when he began printing Potomac's in his home. Now circulation has increased along with its reason to be. I think the economy is getting worse. Um, and I don't think anybody will dispute that. <laughs> Turns out others do agree. I've seen where we're going. I don't like, there are no good outcomes that I see at all. Which may help explain why more than a dozen states are now looking into alternative currencies. If you're on the Titanic, somebody asks the questions, uh, do we need lifeboats and maybe we should think about this. In the so this is your lifeboat? This is, the, this, is, let's, this is the plan for a lifeboat. Back at the market, the lifeboat's afloat. This is a nice situation where I can buy groceries just by being in the market by itself. Which could amount to more someday if the dollar really goes south. Then the possibility exists that uh, the Potomac and other local currencies that are um, based on the U.S. dollar can be freed. It's going to be 11 yeah, Do you need a bag? So with my one Potomac, I can buy two ears of corn, and it's this kind of local stimulus for the economy, which creators of the Potomac and the people that use it say is really helping. Seems innocent enough, right? Can I buy these? But the movement is coming under fire with critics Thank you. who call dollar alternatives catastrophic and unconstitutional for states. But it's certainly disturbing if there are any people in political life who think that the solution to America's currency problem is to opt out of America. And earlier this spring, Bernard von Nothaus, architect of the Liberty Dollar, was convicted on charges of conspiracy and counterfeiting for making and selling his own coins. He was called a domestic terrorist by the U.S. attorney. But for those more concerned about the destruction of the dollar... American dollar is doesn't have any real, it's not backed by anything. The terrorizing is being done to them. You don't want to get in a situation where you've got to have a wheelbarrow to go to the store to buy milk. I mean, that, that has happened. Lauren Lister, RT, Washington, D.C.